All right, so let's now deal with 13b, which says, shade the region that includes all points for which b is greater than a. Let's again remind ourselves that we're dealing with the point a, b. So let me write that down, a, b. Now we know a few things. The first thing that we know is that my a is my x value and my b is my y value. So if they're asking me where b is greater than a, and we know that my b is simply my y value, well, it's simply asking where is y greater than a, and a is my x value. It's simply saying where is my y coordinate bigger than my x coordinate. So let's now deal with this quadrant by quadrant and see if we can find where my y value is going to be greater than my x value. So we're going to deal with this quadrant by quadrant. So let's deal with our first quadrant first. So let's just go through one. So we're trying to find where y is greater than x. So if I have this point right here, this is the point 1, 1. Now is, so this would simply be, if I was to write it in this form, 1 is greater than 1. Is that true? No, that is not true because 1 isn't greater than 1. They're equal to each other. All right, so that's a bit annoying. Let me get my rubber. But now this is the important part. What if I was to move this up? So just like that, I moved it up. So that means my X stays the same. My X is still one, but now my Y is now two, which means, well, my Y is two and my X is one. Is two greater than one? Absolutely it is, which means that this works. But let's take a pause and ask ourselves, could I lower this a little bit and would it still be true? If I took, actually, let me rewrite this. If I got this point right here, that point right there would be one, 1 1.5. And 1 1.5 is greater than one, so that works. What if I went down really, really close? What if I said that was 1 and 1.1? Would that be true? Well, absolutely it would be true because 1.1 is greater than 1. That works. So hopefully you can see is as long as I'm just a little bit above 1, 1. So let me say that again. As long as I'm just a little bit, just infinitesimally a bit above the point 1, 1. As long as I'm above this point my y value is going to be greater than my x value. And hopefully you can see that is going to be true for every time my x and y coordinates are the same in my first quadrant. For instance, if I was to come to 4, 4, 4, 4, at this time, at 4, 4, my x and y's are simply the same. But as soon as I go up just a little tiny bit, so now I'm at 4 and 4.1, now my y is bigger. So what that means, let me get rid of that, is as long as I am just above this point right here, my Y value is going to be greater than my X value. I really hope that makes sense. So that means we have a, a mathematical way of noting this. So we're just going to get rid of these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a dotted line. Now it's important that it's dotted dotted line and we know that any points above this line any points above this line are going to be where my y value is greater than my x value and again i can prove that to you i'm saying any point actually let me shade it in a nicer color i have highlighters that's what we have highlighters for let me highlight this just like that that's nice and pretty so what I'm saying is anywhere in this highlighted part, my Y value is going to be greater than my X value. So let me prove that to you. Let's take this point right here. This point would be two, six, two, six. And as you can see, my Y value is greater than my X value. So that's true. So hopefully you understand the logic for the first quadrant. Let's now go through the second quadrant. Let's go in order. Let's go through the second quadrant now. Okay, the second quadrant is a lot easier. Let's just go through some examples. Let me start down here. So this point right here is going to be negative 2 and 1. Now, what do you notice about that? Well, my x is negative and my y is positive. 
Now, even though two by itself is a bigger number, when it becomes negative two, it's a smaller number than one. And so too, if I went to another point here, let's say negative four and four, negative four is a smaller number than four. What if I went to another point? Negative six and what is this, two? Well, negative six is a smaller number because it's negative than two. Hopefully you're starting to see a bit of a pattern, and that is that in my second quadrant, all my x values are negative, and all my y values are positive. And that's actually related to what we did in the first part of this question in part A. So what that means is because all my x values are negative and all my y values are positive, that means that every point within my second quadrant is going to be a point where my y is greater than x. So I'm going to shade this whole thing in, just like this. I'm going to shade the whole thing. Perfect. All right, so we've done the second quadrant now. We now need to move on to my third quadrant. Now my third quadrant is going to be a lot like my first quadrant. For instance, if I was just to put a random point here, if I was to put a random point just down here, this is going to be negative three and six. Now my negative three and my six, well, is my, sorry, that's negative six. I was looking at it, oh, what's going on? Negative three and negative six, sorry. I should have done that. Negative three and negative six. Well, at the moment, negative three is a bigger number than negative six because it's less negative. So that means here, my x is greater than y, but we don't want that to be the case. We want my y to be greater than my x. So let's move it up. Let's move it up to here at negative three and negative three. Well, at negative three and negative three, both my x and my y's are equal to each other. So that's no good to me either. What I need to be is above this point right here. For instance, as soon as I am, let me, let me just move my point up just a tiny bit. Let me just move it there. So that point would have the same x, negative three, but now because it's moved up a little bit, it's going to be like negative 2.9 because I've moved it up a little bit. I've taken it closer to negative two. Now negative 2.9, negative 2.9, that's a bigger number than negative three. And the reason why it's a bigger number is because it's less negative. Now, this same logic can be applied everywhere. So for instance, if I came to this point right here, negative six and negative six, as soon as I go up just a little bit, so this point that I've marked in here would have the same x, negative six, but now the y would be uh, negative 5.9. And negative 5.9 is bigger than negative six. So what that means is that anywhere above that point is going to satisfy the uh, idea of y being greater than x. So notice how it's very similar to what is happening in my first quadrant. So I'm going to rub all of this out. Rub, 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 rub. And I'm going to draw a dotted line again because we know that we're not including the line and we know where it's anywhere above the line. So I'm going to highlight all of this, all of this. All right. We've now done the third quadrant, let's do the fourth quadrant. And again, the fourth quadrant is going to be easy. Let's go through this quickly. If I had five and this, if I had five and negative three, well, my X is positive and my Y is negative, which means that my X is bigger because it's, it's positive and my Y is negative. So too, if I went down here to two and negative five, again, my y is negative and my x is positive. My x is positive and my y is negative, which means that my x is bigger. And so too, for every point in my fourth quadrant, I'm always going to have a positive x and a negative y. So that means that I'm never going to be in a situation where my y is greater than x. Rather, my x is always going to be greater than y because my x is always positive and my y is always negative. So I'm not going to shade in that region right there. So I'm going to leave that out. So this is what your graph should look like. We don't need these points here. We don't need that point there either. Oh no, I've ruined it. Let me do that. There we go. And you should also put in some arrows because this, this is going to go on for infinity and beyond like that. So that is what your graph should look like. Now this was really a, 
It was a little bit of a tricky question. This is in the reasoning part of the exercise, so don't be too discouraged if you got tripped up on this. But hopefully this explanation, I've really taken it slowly, and hopefully you appreciate how it is that you would approach this type of question. So hopefully this was helpful to you.